Hello friends, this is Growl. In this series, I start with a brand new character in World of Warcraft. No previous achievements, no gold, no anything. Fresh at max level with no connections to see how far I can go. The one catch, I recorded every single minute of the journey and I explained my thought process and decision making along the way. Whether you're just looking to improve your skills and pug your way up, or you just want to come along for the ride, I hope you guys enjoy. It's today the day. We are with a 15 he in our bags, 15 spires. Now I think I look at the details from the last one. Empowered Crystal is not doing a whole lot of healing on Shaman. I think we'll just get rid of this one. Throw this here. And we can throw this here. I am. All right, so we're juiced up. We're juiced up a little bit more. Now, Swirling Currents is one of the big reasons why pressing Cloud Burst or Healing Stream, I guess, so often is so important because it juices the healing of your next single target heal by 29%, which is a lot. And you factor that in with a talent like Undulation, which also juices on average, you know, like 17%. Your healing surges are hitting really big. Now, when you have a 15 key, you can be significantly more picky than you can any other keys. Because 15 keys reward the highest level of loot there is. And so you'll find lots of pretty high level players in these keys. Kind of tempted on grabbing this Demon Hunter though. 239, reasonable score. So this guy's 1819 Hunter. 242 that seems reasonable to me i guess we go let's see who we got Ooh, a tank and a druid and they're both 2k all right we're accepting them bam that's an easy one paladin tank is actually pretty nice for this dungeon virus has a lot of stuff that you need to interrupt and uh paladin has a lot of interrupts relative to other tanks but I like the squad we've assembled. You have a battle res. I got bloodlust. You have a tank that hopefully knows what they're doing. So yeah, if this was if this was you, and you were starting to get to this point where you're doing 15s, I'd probably recommend uh, spending some time in Corthia, doing some callings every day, building up some gold. You know, filling out some of these weaker slots that you have with uh, with higher BOEs if you can. Or the catch-up gear you can get from Corthia. Using that gold to buy some consumables to boost up your stats even more. There's a lot more I could be doing. Like, I don't even have a legendary, first of all. There's a lot more you could be doing to make your character stronger. But I want to I wanna keep the focus on this series mostly about, uh, you know, learning dungeons and progressions in dungeons. Not necessarily about leveling up your guy. This is going to be enormous uh, uh, IO for me, too. This is going to be like. Gosh, who even knows? Another like 120 points or something. We're up to 1207. To our pull timer, and we're into it. A little nervous, but our first 15. And so I'll pass the lead to the tank. Now this first part can be a little scary because of this inspired mob. Let's see what the tank decides to do here. We're gonna pull only this stuff or... Yeah, so this this one inspired mob stops us from interrupting any of these guys. Oh no, he's going. He's going. There. I'm, pre I'm mentally preparing myself to use a lot of healing. But we're gonna pop ascendance in our uh and our phase transfusion right away. I don't quite have a dispel for this, so I'm gonna have to use pretty much all I got to live. I'm watching the Goliath, but I'm afraid that everyone else on my team is watching the Goliath too. 
I'm gonna throw down a cap totem to try and stop some of these other casts. Alright, I'm just gonna kick I'm just gonna kick something else. I'm gonna trust that my team can uh, get the Goliath, I think. The Goliath is the scary kick that you have to worry about in this dungeon. It's, at, at, at some level, it's essentially just a full team one shot. Alright. That was a somewhat spicy pull, but we made it through. Another thing I'm trying to do is purge these menders. Because these menders have two different... Uh, one of their abilities is a weapon that gives the, whoever their target like a big AoE cleave. And another one of their abilities is a heal. And both of them are purgeable by me, so... I'm trying to purge them when I can. Honestly, much, much better than I expected. If we handled this, then... If we, if we handled this, I have a lot more faith in the rest of the run. The bosses in here aren't too challenging. Spires, I think, is actually one of the better keys on a tyrannical week. Alright, let's see. Okay, so we stopped this inspired guy. Gonna run all the way back here. We'll throw down another cap totem just to stun these guys and a transfusion and try and get some damage off before bad stuff happens. These debuffs that I'm dispelling hurt real bad. And you notice I try and be really quick with dispelling them. Some cast going off, so I'm just throwing out my defensive. And that's something that you'll have to be ready to do on a pack like this when you're playing in pugs. Because... You know, you don't know what casts are going off and what won't, you know. You can't rely on your team to interrupt every single cast. So sometimes sometimes you just have to send your defensive even if you're at full health and there's no danger because you don't know what's coming next. So here's this weapon that drops on the ground that someone can actually pick up. You need a melee swing to use it though. So it looks like the hunter wants to stand out, so I'm going to stand in melee. The hunter is actually uh, doing a very good job of coming into the melee to stand in the healing rain and then bait out the swirlies and then come back in. I don't know if it's intentional, but... This is game. He is gaming right now. Uh, we'll take the haste power like we always do. I just noticed we have a feral druid. Alright, so this fight is. You basically want to keep everyone topped as much as you can. Because there's a lot of things in this fight that do a lot of damage. These little orbs that shoot out are going to come close to one-shotting people. And also just this tank hit can hit really hard if the tank doesn't have anything active. I got the spear on me, so I'm going to try and run it away from the, the fighting area. It's a really nice fight for Shaman because I can keep my my Lava Burst or Lava Shock or Flame Burst or whatever it's called <laughs> on two different targets to get double the amount of uh, procs. Starting to fall behind a little bit and our tank looks like he might need a little bit of help so I'm just going to pop Ascendant since this boss fight is going to be pretty long anyway. It'll be almost up by the time it's done.
Now one thing you notice is I'm using Healing Wave a lot more instead of Healing Surge. Honestly, I would be just fine using Healing Surge, but especially as a, you know, when I'm moving up the ranks. I'm going to give this guy a Spirit Link because it seems like he might be in trouble here. At least to top him real quick before this next hit. And we got a Fate Transfusion to top everyone up. You know, when you're moving up in key levels, you can kind of play a little bit conservative. Because we don't necessarily know how long this boss fight's going to be. We've never done a 15 key before, you know. We're just, we're learning. We don't know what these guys' damage is going to be and what their plan is and anything. So, generally it's a good idea to just err on the conservative side. Alright, he wants us to line the site down here. This is a pull that's pretty common. These skirmishers throw at you. And if you stand out in the open, they're just going to throw at you. So you kind of got to get them gathered up. Now one thing that happens is people jump the gun a little bit. And uh, we line of sight, but they come out too early and then they jump up the stairs. And now it's not, they're still basically throwing stuff at us. The most important thing is that the tank stays in range of these mobs. Because once the tank is in range, they'll stop throwing spears at people. And the damage they do is a lot less. And this is a little bit hectic of an area. With quaking, at least. So yeah, the lesson there is to, to be a lot more patient. You have to wait for all the guys to come all the way in before you uh, start hitting them. Because the goal is that when they jump backwards, they can't jump all the way far away. They just jump in place kind of on the stairs. These cats will stun you out of stealth. And usually what you see paladin tanks do is use blessing and protection so that they can't be stopped. But I can understand why that would be a little bit risky in pugs. I'm going to put down a... Slow totem and a cap totem there just to help our tank kind of get some space and buy some time if he needs. While we're doing that, we can drop a fate transfusion in case we need it later. And that later is now. Now we brought this guy in, so we'll focus him down. This is a pretty heavy tank damage pull. There's actually a lot of uh, a lot of heavy tank damage pulls in this dungeon, so... Oh, I just realized I didn't lust. Luckily, our hunter lusted. I completely forgot to lust the boss. Alright, this is another area that can be a bit scary. This one has two Goliaths. We need to be extra careful here with how we interrupt stuff. Our tank is doing a pretty good job, though, staying alive. Haven't had too much problem healing him. Although, once you get up into the, the 240s gear, you, know, you are pretty durable as long as you're pressing all your buttons, right? Alright, so he marked one with X, so I'm just going to put focus the other guy, and I'm going to kick as late as possible. Oh wow, it looks like the Paladin got both of the kicks. And we'll kick that one. Okay, so we're blasting away. Once these Goliath shield, it's kind of a good idea to switch off to hit these Praetors, since you don't necessarily need to kill that shield. It'll end after they get done recharging.
All right. I feel like we're making great time. Making very, very good time. So these debuffs that are going on the tank, these also hurt. That's sort of the theme of Spires. Lots of debuffs that hurt very bad. So you want to make sure you dispel those pretty quick. And the birds, each bird will use one of them. And so if there's a pack with three birds, it'll stack up three different times. So you got to make sure that... I try and wait till at least a couple of the birds uses it. I try not to dispel just one, but it can be hard depending on the situation. Again, we have the hurler guy out there. Our tank doesn't want to be in range of him. Our health got really low, and then somehow we topped ourselves. I wonder if that was someone else. Maybe that was the paladin heal? Word of glory or something? Alright, this part may be scary. Alright, so the tank's trying to grab all these mobs, but there's an inspiring patrol, so you gotta be really careful. Oh boy, I'm gonna kick this guy. No, I'm not. Alright, this might be a time for Spirit Link. I don't know who's gonna be in danger. So I'm just gonna press Spirit Link. Alright, looks like we managed to stun. I'm going to kick this guy out here since he's far out of the pack. I think this might be a time for Ascendance as well. Tank's got six stacks, so we're dispelling him. Our team's blasting away. As long as we just keep sending those cooldowns and keeping us alive for a short time, DPS is doing their job killing the pack, so that's nice. And you can see one of the disadvantages of Shaman damage, right? <laughs> On a pull like that, I'm doing almost no damage. Just because Chalman has to choose whether or not you're DPSing or healing most of the time. So while there's paladin there's there's healers like a Dispriest or a Paladin that could be doing damage to that pull, Chalman or like a Druid maybe could not. Or maybe just like a very little bit of damage. But nothing noticeable. The squad leader has an aura that reduces damage, so we got to uh, focus him down before we worry about the Praetor. Yeah, we're speeding through the dungeon. I think it might be a bit optimistic to call it a plus two, but it would be wild if we were in a 17 key. I kind of want to just keep pushing and get to the point where my team is mad at me because of my gear. I don't know if that's toxic, but... Can I hex this Praetor? I feel like I can hex this guy. But I'm I'm having line of sight issues because I'm a Vulpira. Oh well. I'm going to use my Earth Ellie here. Just to help the tank a little bit, maybe just soak a few hits. And the debuff went on our druid, so we can dispel him. Oh no, I didn't remove the heal. And then, as soon as that squad leader's over, I can use my Fey Transfusion. But the damage is going to get reduced if, uh, if I did it earlier. Alright, so things are looking pretty good for us. So some groups like to reset this boss and get him out of the way so they can take care of this Tormentor. Looks like our Demon Hunter, or our, uh, our Paladin, just wants to sneak over here and do it. 
In pug groups, I think it's totally fine to kill this guy. But yeah, there's a little, there's kind of a scary situation here where the boss is like right next to us. Oh boy, yeah. Not sure what we should do here. We're definitely in big trouble. I'm just preparing to pop basically every defensive I have. Uh oh. Alright, so we've managed to reset the boss. <laughs> I guess that's why the the reset the boss strategy before you fight this guy is common in pugs. But crisis averted. This boss is mostly a single target healing check. And most of Shaman's cooldowns are AoE healing when it comes to healing Tide or Ascendance or anything like that, so... I don't really mind having to blow a lot of my cooldowns before the boss. I'm gonna pop Bloodlust here on this guy now. This debuff might be hard to uh, heal through. I'm gonna start with Healing Wave Spam just because, again, I'm a little worried about how my mana is gonna be on this fight. Also, during Bloodlust, it can be a good idea to be in the habit of healing wave spamming. Just because if you're spamming healing surge during Bloodlust, you can drain your mana really, really quick. Alright, so generally speaking, the, the strategy with this boss is... It'll drop these two orbs that shoot stuff out everywhere, and you kind of want to drop them near the same side of the room. And then you stand on the opposite side of the room just to give you the most time to dodge. I got the bleed on me, and I have my defensive, so may as well press it. The boss is dying real quick. This feral druid is actually blasting. Alright, we'll use our spirit walkers here. Just so we can move but to the spot we want to be while we can still heal ourselves. Nice, we're blasting. Making good time. Now with these angels it's a good it's a good idea to check to see where what the team is doing before you jump on. Because some some squads may have routes where they want to fight other stuff. There is one more pack down there at that platform over there. Um, I sort of under I I have a lot of experience knowing the routes and I know what this guy is gonna pull. So I'm not too worried. Like I just kind of jumped on, but in a situation like that with a portal or like a big RP thing, you might want to at least wait for your tank to jump in before you decide to go in yourself. All right, let's see. I think he wants to pull both of these, but I don't. I don't know if my poor shaman is capable of it. Oh, you know what I just realized? Oh no! I hope this didn't hurt the video. I just realized that I turned my graphics settings up yesterday when I was playing, just to like, kind of see stuff. And Spires has really, really bad frame rate. So I'm a little worried that I messed up my graphics settings, and this recording is lagging. If it is, I apologize. I'm gonna drop it down right now. I'm gonna make it look like I'm picking my power, but really I'm turning down my graphics. Alright, if it was bad, hopefully it's... Hopefully it's not so bad now. Sneaking along.
Oh, he's going to help me get up. What a nice feral druid. All right. Our tank says he doesn't want to do Sagadon. Now that we're in a 15, we will uh, we'll talk about how skipping these tormented mobs works. So previously, previously I mentioned that you basically want to kill all four of them. And that's because at the end of the dungeon, for each one you don't kill, it empowers the last boss with an aura that is similar to the aura that the mini boss has. So Sagadon's aura is increased physical damage, which in this dungeon, it's not too bad. It's basically just the tank takes more damage from the boss, but there's not a whole lot of other scary stuff going on for the tank. So it's actually very, very common that we skip Sagadon uh, and just do that aura with the last boss. All right, well, here we go. Third boss. We have essentially all the trash count we need. The one thing you'll notice is I'm, I'm moving my earth shield around occasionally, not just keeping it on the tank. The second boss and the third boss of this dungeon can do some pretty heavy single target damage. And I'll throw the earth shield on whoever the boss picks. You can see I'm tracking where the, the debuff goes. So this one goes on our Pharaoh. I'll throw Earth Shield on him right before, and then that way my, uh, just can do a little bit more healing on him. Especially when, especially when there's quaking and you don't necessarily know when, you know, you're going to have to stop and not be able to cast for some time. We'll drop a Cloud Burst just for a little bit of extra healing, although there's not too much group healing to do. Now this is where the boss takes extra damage, so you want to blast him here. And the tank has to soak these orbs. Looks like we have two different soakers here. Unfortunately, our hunter wanted to turtle him, but when you're turtled, you can't attack. So we actually lost quite a bit of <laughs> quite a bit of boss damage there due to that mishap. I'm just collecting orbs. You can see playing very, very conservatively. Uh oh. My mana is just fine, but just good habits. Good habits to get into once you're starting to fight tyrannical bosses and higher keys. Being a little bit more conscious of your mana and trying to do little things for efficiency. But I don't have my astral shift, so. Kind of preparing myself here. Here I'll use my spirit walkers just to make sure I can keep healing myself while I'm having to run around like this. I'm gonna drop a healing rain too since everyone's all close together. Boom. Alright. Making great time. Three mini bosses and one non mini boss to go. Oh no, yeah, I'm looking at my. I'm looking at my recording. I'm getting some skipped frame errors, which is very unfortunate. Hopefully, this doesn't. Uh, doesn't detract from the video too much. Feels bad, man. I don't think it's possible for us to get a plus two, but if we find ourselves with a 17 key, that would be quite amusing. These guys definitely have the damage for it. Specifically, this Feral Druid. This Feral Druid has just been destroying the meters the entire dungeon. Very fortunate we ran into this uh, Feral tank combo. Come save the day. 
So these first two mini bosses don't do too much. It's mostly just dodging. And there's not a lot of healing cooldowns that are required, but third angel and sometimes the last boss can require quite a bit of healing. So you'll notice, even though maybe I could be using stuff here, could throw it on a tide or something. Oh, I forgot to press mana shield. <laughs> Looks like uh, we're going to have to do an episode where I soup up my UI a little bit. We don't even have Bloodlust available for this guy yet, so... I'll just use my Fey Transfusion and DPS him. So we're using these Kyrian Spears. There's two different Spears. Well, technically three, but you can only get two, really. In the dungeon, and you can use them to stun mobs and make them take increased extra damage, so... This last mini-boss is usually a pretty good spot to use those Spears. All right, 11 minutes. I think I think the the plus 2 dream is actually possible. You can definitely see the quality of team jump that we have here in this 15 key. Obviously not every team that you run into in a 15 key is going to be this strong, but you know, all these guys definitely came to game, that's for sure. Okay, so this boss has two different mechanics that are important. It's a big AoE damage and then a debuff and so the debuff goes out on two people and you want to immediately dispel one and then hopefully the other person has some sort of defensive or something they can use because they hurt pretty bad because what happens next is another aoe damage check right so it's kind of testing your ability to keep those two targets healed up and this boss might not seem super intimidating at this level, but as you keep going up, you know, the, the healing check required to... I just dispelled the wrong guy. The brain check as well, I guess. So we'll grab an orb here. Gotta grab five of these to put them in the middle. Sounds silly, but I'm actually going to press my Ascendance here. So far, this is the most amount of damage I've seen so far. I'm going to Bloodlust here as well. This is going to be the longest phase of the boss. Okay, we'll use this Fade Transfusion to top everyone after the blast. Then it's basically just a mix of those two debuffs and then blast that sort of test your ability to top everybody. I think the plus two dream is alive. We're looking real good here. This will be really nice for our weekly vault too. <laughs> Well, we have some chances at some very, very good loot out of our weekly vault for doing this 15. I ain't moving, I believe. Keystone Master. My first plus 15 timed. <laughs> I think when my team sees that achievement, they're going to click on me and look at my gear and be like, uh, or who knows, maybe they already know. Holy sh you guys need any of that loot. It's so fat. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah, I need. He says anyone need. Yo, I'll take it. This is a this is a big upgrade for me. 236. Holy moly. 
This is big. Boom. We're hard chilling. <laughs> 17 necrotic wake. Are we doing it? We have a 17 key. My character's score is 1338. And my item level is 224. <laughs> Am I going into group finder with a 17 necrotic wake? Hold on, let's check my mail. Maybe I got some gold. Maybe I can make a legendary. Let's go to the vendor. Let's sell this. Oh, you know what I could do? <laughs> Is I could upgrade my staff with Valor. I have 3970 Valor. So what I could do... Is I could start upgrading this weapon with Valor. I haven't used any of my Valor yet. I'm just going into Groove Finder with a 17 Necrotic Wake. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I do, th this is a little bit suspicious. We have to hope people are uh, not paying as good of attention to me now. Before, it's like, yeah, they could probably brush it off that I'm, like, you know, low item level and low score. But at this point, I don't know if I belong in keys, even at 15 level, let alone above 15. Let's let's maybe turn on the Raider IO add-on. I think it's time that we start souping up our... Uh... The only thing I'm a little bit worried about the Raider IO add-on is somehow if it'll find me and it'll know that this is my account. But I don't think it will. I don't think it will. See? So this is what people see. So if you look in the very bottom right, it shows the tooltip for my character. And it shows that my best run is a 15 two-chested. That's what people see for me. But one, a big benefit of the Raider IO add-on is that I can look at people and it'll also show if they have any alternate characters. And the best way to push keys, in my opinion, if you're doing the around, like, you know... 10 to 10 to 15 level is look for people on alt characters and look for people who are you know already know what's going on because if someone if someone ha has gone through everything and gone through ksm and knows what's going on then they're gonna be li likely to be much better than someone who's on their first character not all the time obviously and you know we've we've had plenty of situations where we've given people a chance uh so far on our run-up but it looks like it looks like 17 might be our limit so one option we can do is we can just drop this key to a 15 and a 15 will still be great for us but it may be easier to find some people for that because 15 won't be nearly as difficult although part of what i'm thinking is that i don't think 17 would be too difficult either I'm pretty confident if we can find people to do the 17 that we'd manage. So I'll give it I'll give it another minute or two. I probably I, I probably am flying too close to the sun here. The downside, the downside to dropping my key to a 15 is that if I deplete it, then it becomes a 14. And I'm the difference between a 15 and a 14 will be pretty big. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop my key level one level. My key level is too high. Can you reduce it? So if you talk to this NPC right here, you can actually drop your key level. So now we'll go to D list. And now we'll do 16. And maybe we'll uh the 16 is kind of a safety net. It might be a little bit easier to find people for a 16, but also if things go wrong and we happen to deplete it i'll still have a 15. And i still have another chance at getting that time 15. okay we got rob the dk now we have a lot more information on their characters oh this is a full stack with a healer that says they'll dps full stack from ragnaros um You know what? Heck. Why not? We got a full four-man group that wants to join. Sup. They were already at the stone. Hmm, this might be a red flag. 
if people are already waiting at a dungeon, that probably means they just did it and they just depleted it. It's possible that it means they just timed it. But if they're already at the dungeon within one second of inviting him, it probably means they were waiting out here to begin with. So our tank is Kyrian, we'll be able to make use of the Kyrian buffs. Hopefully no one notices my item level. We're giving him the ready check. Here's the, uh, here's the details from last run, by the way. Corrosive Vial. What is this? Oh, this is... I used the Bag of Tricks one time. Here's our healing breakdown. Waking Dreams. This is pretty good. This is doing a decent chunk of healing for me. Okay, my entire team is speaking to each other in Spanish. He says, no hablo espanol. I say si. <laughs> okay, he cheered. Okay, good. Ready? All right, I'm doing a pull timer. Four, Here we go. Our three, first 16. Two, one. I'll pass the lead to our tank. And here we go. We haven't done too much Necrotic Wake. We haven't done too much of this dungeon. Looking forward to this one. This first pull can be a little bit scary depending on what the tank wants to pull. Oh, and he's going for it. He's going for it big time. I'm going to kick that drain fluids. Luckily, I was able to. Even though one of these mobs is inspiring. Luckily, most of the stuff you pull at the beginning doesn't do too much damage. So it looks like it's a pretty intimidating pull, but it's not too bad. As long as we keep juice in our tank. And again, using healing wave a lot just because we're a little bit we're a little bit unsure. We don't know what our we don't know what the route's gonna be, we don't know what our mana situation's gonna be like. Oh no, my keybinds got messed up. No wonder I couldn't flame lava burst. Oh no. There we go. Okay, that was scary. Okay, so the next pull is we're clearing a path to get to this mini boss over here because doing the mini boss really early is very helpful. So we're kind of going off to the side here. This isn't a route you would have seen in dungeons below level 10, but this season it's good we can clear a path over to this mini boss here. Alright, I don't know how much this guy's going to hurt. Uh-oh, so the Swirly's under us. And we don't want to have everybody in melee, but I really want to be in melee, because I want to be in the healing ring. Use our Fae Transfusion for a little bit of haste and stuff. Help us juice this guy. This is the downside of trying to get to this guy early, is <laughs> your space over here is very limited. It's pretty easy for things to go wrong. And uh, we'll take the haste power. We'll continue taking it. No reason not to. Our demon hunter snuck in and grabbed some of the weapons. So a big part of this dungeon at a high level is there's a lot of these weapons and orbs that are scattered throughout. And it's all about using them as efficiently as possible on some of the hardest pulls. These Corpse Harvester guys use this Throw Flesh that actually does quite a bit of damage. You can see that my health is getting chunked here as they throw stuff at me, so... I did pop my defensive and uh -oh, I'm getting drained. Alright, nice another important cast that we need to stop all right so here's where the fun begins 
Now, at a key level like this, I would assume most people know what's going on with the orbs. So the, the plan here is everyone grabs these orbs, these orbs pulse damage and healing, and you just stand right on top of the boss with all the all the mobs. Holy shit, the boss just crunched our poor demon hunter. As long as you're standing on top of the boss, you can see all this stuff just gets shredded all around it. And everyone's staying at full, full health, more or less, even though I'm not even healing much. Sometimes I'll throw out my Riptides just to give a little hot and also to increase their max health because of the talent. Yeah, but see, our friends over here, they gotta be standing in. And see, if you see right here, this Kyrian weapons, this is showing how much damage that these weapons are doing. I'm trying to position myself so that it doesn't hit anybody. And we still have 10 more seconds of these orbs. You can see all these worms are just getting roasted. This is a big part of how you uh, how you do this dungeon and how you beat some of these really hard bosses. Now we can start actually using some buttons. Now that uh, the orbs are gone, they last one minute, and you can see it lasted almost the entire boss fight. use cap totem on these worms these worms melees actually hit kind of hard you got to be careful if you're eating too many i always like to use my slow totems and my stun totems on those worms all right so now we're on to this pack this is another pack with two of these corpse harvesters. This dungeon is kind of loud. <laughs> we'll throw down a healing tide just because we're going to have to be ready to do some AoE healing here. We're blasting away. If I had to guess, I'd say these guys are maybe farming for a specific item. Or they're just a couple buddies doing some weekly keys. But they didn't they didn't seem to care about my item level or score or anything. Alright. Now if you thought the last orbs were powerful, we get another set of orbs. There's three total sets. Point this one real quick since it's kind of hard to see. I'll interrupt this guy just to make sure we get him in. We'll throw down a cap totem just to reduce some of the damage. But for the most part, you can see I don't need to do any healing. These orbs do all the work. As long as you're standing in, the orbs are doing all the work. We still have some leftover orbs, so yeah, let's just run over to this pack. Now this Marauder guy has a big frontal, like, cleave right there. So you see both me and the Demon Hunter are rushing to get behind him. I'm gonna kick this Bone Mender guy, because he's got some heals. see what he tries to do here so we have mind soothe so this is something we haven't seen too often yet but priest has an ability called mind soothe that basically reduces the detection range of mobs you can see it above his head right there and it doesn't work on all mobs i think only like humans and dragons but it's very good for a situation like that because we can completely skip that mini boss pack without actually having to fight it I'm going to drop a tremor just in case this kit gets missed because I wanted to 
channel FA transfusion there. I probably should stay in my in my field of blossoms. All right, so this pull might get a little bit spicy because we have an inspiring mob and a caster. So I'm gonna kind of get some heals out, and then right away I'm just gonna pop a sentence when this volley goes off. I know we're gonna take some damage, and then want to be able to stay ahead of the heals. But these guys are playing super well. Very clean run. And we'll go on to the second mini boss, Oros. And this one you just have to pay attention. This is this is the guy that tests you paying attention. Because when you're slowed, you have a lot less time to get out of these swirlies. And then at the same time, you have this one debuff you have to worry about. And it doesn't hit too hard, but you just can't fully ignore it. So it's all about just paying attention. There's also a guy that this big monstrosity that patrols down back down this whole area. So you got to be careful of him. If you're fighting this guy. Uh, let's take the speed power. We'll grab our orb and we'll go. And that will be the last orb of the dungeon. I'm going to grab this hammer real quick just in case they forgot it. And I'm going to kick that caster in. Let's throw down a cap totem just to reduce some of the damage. So our tank isn't getting beat up too hard. But I'll just save this hammer. I can use it on a boss in case of an emergency. And you can see how incredibly strong these orbs are in this dungeon. We are not very far. Oh, we've not been in here for very long. What, like 10 minutes or something? And we're already almost 70% done with all the trash and about to fight the, uh, the next boss. I'm going to walk up here and do this little thing here. There's a little roleplay event that happens. I'm gonna uh, drop a healing tide and a fade transfusion too. There's a little roleplay event here that happens where all these guys die. And if you walk up and then down real quick, you can, uh, you can activate it without having to wait for it. That way the boss will, will, will already be here. Now we're on to Veruth. This is the guy that reduces our Reduces our healing, so we got to be extra careful. Charges on me, so I'm always uh, pressing my astral shift there. This this hurts pretty bad. You can see how how weak my heals are at this level with Veruth uh, with that Veruth aura. So Demon Hunter used Blur, which gives him a chance to dodge, so he's able to dodge that bleed. Now, a really good button to press on this guy is Spirit Link. The Spirit Link ignores... Uh, Spirit Link technically isn't healing. It's health transfer. Um, I don't know. I'm feeling good about this. Let's just take crit. I don't think we'll need mana here. And we'll slam Bloodlust on the boss. This boss isn't too scary. The one thing is it's kind of a check that you have to kill all these adds real quick. And sometimes the adds can make it a bit annoying to kill them because they're ranged guys. Kind of just like stand out and do their own thing. I'm going to try and put some damage on this guy just to make sure he dies. I tried to kick him in, but it didn't work. And again, we got Bloodlust active, so I'm trying to be a little more conscious with my mana. So once the boss does that spell, he gets these stacks that uh, pulse damage. So right away, I'm just going to pop my Ascendance kind of maybe like 10 seconds after the damage starts just to try and do a bulk of the healing while it's uh, while it's going. I see that guy. It looks like my team's doing a great job of kicking stuff, though. These guys are playing super well again. It looks like this boss is almost dead, so I'm just going to drop a Fade Transfusion there.
Yeah, this boss got destroyed. Tyrion weapons, pretty strong. There's also one more orb that's kind of hidden behind this Goliath over there that you can pick up, but it looks like I think one of them already grabbed it. You have plenty of time. Alright, the tank wants to pull big. Looking at my cooldowns, I have Ruby and I have Healing Tide, so it looks like that's what I'm going to press. I get this cleaver on me and I'm going to try and aim the cleaver towards the enemies, but it's a little hard since stuff is moving. Or splatter there on that corpse collector is a really important cast, so I'm going to try and get that one. And yeah, again, you can see we've saved a lot of our Kyrian weapons because you can do almost all of the beginning part with just those orbs. And then we can use our Kyrian weapons on all this stuff. Uh-oh. I missed the Gore Splatter cast. So I think it's because he was inspired. Alright, we can heal through. <laughs> What's funny is, I think this is going to be another plus two. I think we're going to end up with an 18 key in our bags. We've definitely had a we've definitely had a fortunate run of groups, but at the same time, uh, I think if you just take your time and do what you can as a healer, you can actually affect the success rate of the run quite a bit. Okay, this Sogadon got pulled, and I'm kind of scared that I'm going to get yoinked in. One thing you have to be a little bit conscious of as a healer is healer threat. Meaning, if someone just barely greases a mob with maybe one ability, or even just walks by them with doesn't use anything, as soon as you heal them, you're going to start generating threat on that mob too. And... It means the mob can... hurt you badly. <laughs> and as a healer, you have to be careful about getting meleeed by mobs. I've definitely been uh, gripped in and crushed by this guy before. And for this power, we can take our shield again. For the most part, you'll find that you're taking the same powers kind of uh, every run, no matter what. Which is, I think, one of the big critiques of the system. I do like the idea of having these mini bosses that you fight and then getting powers from them, but I would like if there was a little more choice. It does seem like a couple of the powers in each one of the mini bosses are a little bit junky, and there's not a whole lot of reason to pick them. Some of the some of the decisions are cool, or who knows? You know, even if even if a power only gets used like in one or two scenarios, it's still pretty dang cool. All right, our tank's got three stacks of that armor break on them, so we're going to make sure we keep juicing them with heals. And we're making good time. We were a little ahead on count. I think we got a little more than we needed to, but that's okay. Let's see if we can see some Ragnaros geometry here. Okay. I, <laughs> I was hoping they were going to prove me wrong and do something good, because they've been playing well so far, but never mind. And yeah, we're almost... Oh, oh boy. Oh, the Warlock Gate. Then we can run over here. That way this cleaver hits this guy. They could have uh, latency problems too. Since I think I'm the group leader and I'm NA. They're in a... They're in a Spanish server. All right. 
right, well, we're slamming it. And I still have this hammer, too, in case of an emergency, which will be nice. Yeah, our tank's playing super well. You can see the difference between a uh, geared and experienced tank and a not geared and not experienced tank in runs like these where, you know, we barely need to heal. Just just have an earth shield and rip tide on him and watch him in case he gets low now and then. It's pretty much all we need. I think Warrior is actually a really durable tank too. Warrior isn't super popular nowadays, but I still think Warrior is very strong. Although I don't necessarily mind it falling out of favor since it was so popular in BFA for so long. So this guy does group damage to everyone nearby, so that's why I kind of dropped a healing rain on him. Just to try and negate that a little bit. All right, well, we have 15 whole minutes for two bosses. I don't think we're quite on plus three pace, but we're well, well into plus two pace, so. So this guy right here is not actually the boss. You don't need to put too much damage into him. But if it helps you build resources or whatever, you can. And you do want to put some damage into him at a point because he does need to die eventually. All right, so it's fixated on me. We zoom in out of here. I thought that hook would get him. I thought the hook would get him. That's why I wasn't moving at first, but luckily we lived one swing. All right, since we killed the first guy, now we got to wait for this guy. It's technically a little bit faster if you can keep that first creation alive, and then you can hook him right, right you'd be hooking him right now, but. Still thing is going pretty good. Drop a healing tide just because some group damage is coming out. Generally, like, the second time the boss comes down is when things start to get a little bit scary. So it's good to have some sort of a cooldown there. Doesn't have to be anything major, but... Hmm, that was quite unfortunate. We'll just uh, top everyone up real quick. Sometimes quaking can have some interactions that are a little bit strange. All right. And our tank friend just wants to go, so we'll throw up bloodlust. So we got to be a little careful on these dispels. We got to make sure that when we dispel, no one else is in their circle. Or else they're going to get frozen. Once we only have one dispel we can use every eight seconds. So once one person gets frozen, if, we, if another person gets frozen, then we're in trouble. I'm going to save my Fae for the next shield here. The shield is what does the damage and also is what needs to be broken. So. Abilities like Fade Transfusion are great to save for, like, just those moments. Because even if the shield lives, you can use it to heal after. And yeah, we're blasting this boss down. This is the cleanest run of the series, I think. I think when you invite four stacks or groups of friends, it's going to be hit or miss. If you get a group of friends that are decent and play well together, then 
things should go pretty smoothly, but if things don't go smoothly, chances are you're going to be the one that gets blamed because they're not going to be blaming each other. So that's something that I'm willing to put up with. It's not going to hurt my feelings too much. So I'm going to pop Ascendance here and Spirit Walkers just because we got a shield out. And we only have four people here. Just one of our DPS got sent down. I forgot I have my hammer too. All right, I'm chucking this hammer as soon as this ends. Bam. 100k. It's good in case things go way, way wrong. You can have that hammer as a healer to just break a shield really quickly if you don't have any big cooldowns or anything for it. And we did it. Another plus two. We're, we are gaining massive amounts of IO today. Oh, we got a strength sword. Oh, we got a shield, but now we don't really need this shield. Thank you for coming. We'll keep the, we'll hold on to the shield in case we somehow get a really strong one-hander. And our key is an 18 miss. <laughs> oh boy. I really want to put this into group finder on this guy. I could use a changeling. Oh boy. And look at our details real quick. Now our DPS matters a lot less in a dungeon like that, you know. We basically just need to worry about the bosses and the weapons take care of everything else. It's almost just like having a six player in the dungeon. And we honestly didn't use him as efficient as... Well, so we didn't use them as efficiently as we could, but for a group in a plus 16, those guys played very, very well in terms of using the weapons on the right bosses and making use of the orbs. Maybe not all of them, but here's our healing breakdown. You can see we needed to heal almost nothing. You know, a lot of our healing is just like passive stuff. Stone Ward, Earth Shield, our Vulpira passive. This is our Covenant passive. Yeah, so we did we did very little spot healing that dungeon. Everything went super smooth. We, we got loot, sort of. We got loot, but it's not quite an upgrade for us now. But it is a very nice shield with crit versus and avoidance. So if we happen to get like a one-handed weapon out of our weekly chest next week, I'd happily upgrade this with Valor. This is a great item to use. A lot of people ask about shield versus uh, staff on Shaman. And ultimately, it doesn't matter that much. Like, you're mainly just trying to get the most stats you can get, but... If possible, you do want to use a shield because a shield gives you uh, armor and block and stuff, which isn't super important because you shouldn't be getting hit that often, but you do get hit sometimes. So generally, I wouldn't drop healing power for it, but if I can ever prefer it, I do. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll be releasing regular episodes, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and click the bell to get notified when the next episode is out. I also come out with regular guides for healers in World of Warcraft, as well as videos explaining UI and all other sorts of things. If you enjoy content like this, I'd also highly recommend coming to check out my stream at twitch.tv yummytv where we're always gaming there. The link is in the description, and happy keying.